So the parts for the lean-to just showed up. Uh, we've got some screws here. We have this tape of some sort. The thing is though, like I can't find any instructions. If you're going to skip this installation manual like a real man would do, please at least see blah, blah, blah. Oh, hey, Steven, can I interest you in the instructions? Uh, you have to make the instructions? Or yeah, are you the enemy? You make the instructions? Oh, gosh. Wow. Yes, if, there's, if there's a thankless job. Yep. There's no instructions. <laughs> I'm wearing all your private stuff. You better come out and pound me. No, no instructions. What? The lean to just showed up and there's no instructions for it. So how are you going to build it? Oh, I, I have no idea. So the garage is done or done ish. Uh, I still got some work to do on that, but uh, it's time for it's time for more garage or at least something off the side. So we still have the problem of we got these trailers over here in the yard. We got the, the camper right there. I'd like to put that under cover and not in the middle of the yard. So what we're going to do is over here, you can kind of see I've been uh, staking out. We're going to do uh, a parking pad with uh, a carport off the side of the garage. And that will have a that will give the trailers a place to park and be covered, protected from the elements, that sort of thing. So we're gonna do it, it's just gonna be a pad, kind of like a driveway. So it's gonna be uh, four inches thick. We're gonna need to do some digging here because that's gonna be the height of the pad. That way if water ever uh, congregates on there, it doesn't go into the garage. It'll be a little bit lower than the garage. But we need to uh, move some dirt, put up some forms, put up some rebar. We're gonna pour a pad. And then I found a company that's gonna sell me the parts to uh, make a carport. It's kind of like a, a DIY some assembly required sort of situation where they just send you a bunch of metal and you figure out how to put it together. But we're gonna be doing that too. But first, first we get to do the fun part, which is let's go rent a skid steer and get to digging. Um, well, it, see some of them are crossed out. So you just kind of choose which one you want. Top, bottom, so we need, to, we need dirt up to the bottom. And over there, it's the opposite. We need to go down over there. Would you like to explain what you're doing? It's a fun new game called Hammery Stick. Witness Alan raking the last of forms, or the I, dirt. I did all this. He did all of it. I did it all. <laughs> so yeah, the forms are in. We used. We actually wound up using, uh, these are one by sixes that were left over from building the garage. So this is gonna be deeper than I was originally planning, but that will be uh, better, right? More concrete, more sturdy, and Alan's gonna be in the middle of it, so. I'm gonna get my footprints everywhere. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so now we got to go return the skid steer, sad day, uh, and then get some rebar and rebar it. So do, do you have to put the skid steer back on the trailer or do you just drive it back to the rental place? Good question. Might take a little while, but we could drive it. You got, what, like 12 hours of rental? I used it for like two. <laughs> you, you got 10 more hours of rental. All right, so we have got some rebar. This is 3 8 inch rebar. We've got some rebar ties. There's chairs for them somewhere that I forgot. They're, they're around, though. 
Uh, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to drill some holes into the existing foundation, stick these guys in there. We also have some glue of sorts that we're going to help anchor those into the existing foundation. We've got these uh, expansion joint things that are going to go in between the existing foundation and the new pad so they can expand and contract at different uh, rates. And we're going to be putting our rebar 18 inches apart uh, in a, a grid pattern, tie them all together. Oh, and uh, right now the uh, this edge of the foundation is like not smooth at all, like right where we need to put our expansion joint stuff. So in order for it to sit down smoothly, I'm going to try and take this like cement grinding disc and grind all or most of this off just so it'll sit down nice and flat. So we'll get started with that. So the pad is now ready for concrete. Uh, admittedly, maybe we could have done a little bit better of a job of smoothing the dirt out. It's slightly wavy in some parts, but uh, the important part is that the rebar is below the top of the forms and above the ground. So it should be just fine. On the expansion material here, kind of ran into a problem with that. So I was trying to grind away the excess concrete here. Then I tried hammering it. Then I tried sledgehammering it. And then I hit the house. So I decided to stop. Uh, and what I wound up doing is uh, cheating. So you'll see it is spaced off the house here. I put some rebar on either side of it to kind of hold it there. So what we're gonna do is put a little bit of concrete on this side, put the rest of the concrete on this side. Uh, the large part of the pad will be able to have that gap there. Uh, and hopefully that works. There was no way I was getting all that excess concrete off without something major and potentially ruining the side of our new garage. So concrete should be here at 8.30 in the morning. So we will see you then. Alan's not strong enough to go the distance. Alan's also mildly ill today. He's also mildly ill. Wheelbarrows are for suckers. We're just gonna back it up and move it around. It'll be fine. Look at that. Hey, I just made that flat. So the 
pad is done and boy was that an adventure. Uh, so this is it's about 10 yards of concrete and I'd say this is the extreme end of DIY probably. Like we should have had more guys to help. Just me and Alan was not enough. So what happened was um, the concrete truck, the chute only reached about halfway down the pad and we couldn't bring it in from the other side because the septic system is in the yard and we didn't want to, you know, crush the thing that provides for us or however you say that, I don't know. Um, so we started off with wheelbarrows and then we decided wheelbarrows were dumb because um, it was taking a long time. Uh, so then we had the guy just pour a bunch of concrete in the middle and we were gonna rake it all to the end. And that was, that was extremely exhausting. Like I didn't know how hard that was gonna be to move like five yards of concrete just with rakes. Like it was, it was a, a lot. So we get that done. Um, luckily, uh, my parents were on their way home from vacation. They were here to pick up their dog. So my dad jumped in to help out. And so as Alan and I were leveling off the concrete, he came and smoothed it all out because it was, it was already starting to harden. It had taken us probably like two or three hours just to get the concrete like where it needed to go. Uh, and as we got to the end, like we're already exhausted from moving all the concrete, like it's starting to dry and it's getting harder and harder to level it off. So big thanks to Alan and my dad. If they weren't here, I don't think this would have gotten done. Um, but it came out uh, pretty good. Our, our, what was that? Reciprocating saw vibrator. That worked out really well to get a, a good fill on the edges. The, uh, the cheat that we did with the uh, expansion material, that worked out pretty well. It all came out really nice. We were able to use it as an edge to level everything off. And so the next part you can see is here. So this is the uh, lean-to kit of sorts. So uh, this company, uh, Mueller. If you live in Texas, you've probably seen one of their buildings somewhere. Big orange roofs. I ordered from them. And so they don't really, they don't actually sell lean-to kits. Uh, what I did is I designed a building online with uh, a lean-to off the side of it. And then when they gave me the quote, I was like, hey, I just need the lean-to. And they're like, we don't really do that. But you know, if you wanted to build just a lean-to, here's all the parts for it. So I still need to go through and figure out what's what, where everything goes. Luckily, the gym I go to is um, it's just a steel building and they have a lean-to off the side of theirs. So I've been studying that pretty intently for the past few weeks. So I've got a good idea of what we need to do. Just need to um, start cutting and welding and get all this stuff up. Uh, Alan's supposed to be here tomorrow to help out. And before he gets here, I'm hoping I can make some progress or at least figure out what we need to do um, and get this thing moving. So here goes lean-to kit. That was harder than it should have been to put in just bolts in a pad, right? There were, there were a number of adventures, adventures mostly being uh, anchors that we didn't know how to use right. I didn't know how to use right. Rebar in the way. Also, we can't, we can't drill straight. That was probably the main problem. Uh, so if you're doing bolts into plates like this, one thing that will help that we found out is um, don't just put all your bolts in and then try and put the plate on top when your tolerances are really close. What you should do is hammer the bolts in uh, with the plate on the ground that way if your holes are kind of sideways you don't have a problem where your bolts are all sticking in different directions and you can't get the plate on good news we learned that on like the second to last one <laughs> so i did figure out how all this goes together and so what happens is these uh these square four by four tubes these are our uprights so everywhere we have a plate on the ground we're going to weld an upright to it and we'll cut it however high we need it. Uh, these bigger beams, they run in between the uprights. Then these uh, these shorter ones right here, they slot in between the top rails, whatever you want to call them. And then uh, put the roof on top of that, gutters and whatnot, done. So the upsies, downsies, the sidesies, sidesies, and the this way, that ways? All that, right oh. now. Just thinking about it, it's like, it's like seven pieces. I mean, there's seven pieces. Easy. How, how, we just did six six plates on the floor seven pieces only one more it's gonna be fine it's done it's gonna be fine <laughs> so we just discovered that we um well we cut wrong so that's usually a given but at least this time we cut long the problem is now it's in the air. Uh, we forgot to take off eight inches for um, the, 
whatever you call it, beam there. It's supposed to be eight inches shorter. Well, top saw's up there, so let's just take eight inches off the bottom. I like your idea, yeah. but I foresee a problem. Steven wants to get Aaron. He doesn't know this. I'm going to act like I'm dead. <laughs> you weren't supposed to see that. Well, he tells me it didn't really fall on you. I was supposed to. You were supposed to see that. It's supposed to be terrifying. <laughs> I'm gonna let you get back up. There goes, yourself. there goes my funny, funny prank. And he said, measure this 14 feet tall. And I said, do you want it really 14 feet or do you want an Allen 14 feet? And Stephen said, don't worry, I'll double check. I never double checked. The good news is though, someone has given the stamp of approval as to uh, we don't need to cut it down shorter. It can be that high, which is actually good. So it's gonna be 11 and a half feet on that side, 14 feet on that side. So if you have like a 12 foot RV or something, it'll probably fit under because it, it, it goes up. But, um, you know, we're just future proofing again, just just in case. If it's 12 feet, you can fit a, a car lift under this, right? We can do that too. Perfect. There you have a structure. It might even be straightish. Uh, I know these beams look heavy and stuff, but each one, like after you get it cut, they're only about 70 pounds. It's just that they're they're so long, they're kind of hard to uh, to manage. So I know a lot of people think the answer is Miata, but in this case, it turns out it's scissor lift. So if you thought I was dumb for buying a scissor lift, I'm probably still dumb for other reasons. But this thing is coming so handy, and it's already like earned its keep to rent one for the amount of time we've had it. We'd be like way over what it costs to buy this. So that's going well. Um, so yeah, the next part is we're going to go ahead and paint this. You can see Aaron's already started painting this. Uh, this matches like part of the, the trim color of the house. So we're gonna go ahead and paint it before we put the roof on. That way we don't have to worry about painting around our new clean roof. Uh, so a little bit of paint and then I have to figure out how the roof goes up. So that should be another adventure. Um, it probably won't be too bad, I, I say that. So the thing is each section of roof is only about three feet wide. The thing is it's also 15 feet long. So they do get, uh, again, they're not like super heavy, but just managing that big of a piece of material, we're gonna have to find some way to get those up there and screw them down. The, uh, the, the kit did come with like all these screws here and you got caulking and this tape to go in between the roof seams and these little fancy rubber things that go underneath the roof pieces. Um, then we got all of our trim here. So roof, trim, paint, I already said that. Um, and then we're done. So let's finish it. It's her first solo trip to the moon. Did it. Is it better than a ladder? Yeah. It is. 
This is the problem solving portion of today's episode where I try and figure out how to get a 15 foot roof panel almost 15 feet in the air by myself. Again, it's not it's not the weight that's the problem. It's, it's just so big and hard to handle. It's like impossible. So got another idea. We're going to try that. See how it goes. So that's one roof panel. We're already starting to get some shade over here. But that took, I probably took like an entire hour just to get that one up there. And obviously I won't be able to use the same method to get the panels up there forever. So I'm thinking what I might do is uh, get them up over here, finish this portion of the roof up to this center beam right here, and then uh, stack a whole bunch of them on top of the roof and then uh, just put them on. That's, I think what I'm gonna do. Um, and if anyone's wondering if that's a steep enough slope for the roof panel to slide off if you're not holding it, the answer is yes. I uh, didn't get it on video, but it uh, got a little bit of a breeze and decided to escape. Almost uh, took out the side by side, but luckily I was able to catch it just in time. And so crisis averted, it's up there, it's screwed in now. It's not coming down. Um, only 11 more to go. So here we go. this far we are we're getting really close here so I just got up the last panel that I could kind of you know like sliding them up and then shimmying them around and when I say last panel, I mean there's actually there's another one up there so if you see that the clamp right there that's uh it's holding a panel from sliding down and then those are um those are my safety two by fours just in case the the clamp fails so it won't fall off and you know die in the grass um so I need to this last panel only has three screws in it I need to finish screwing that one in and then my plan is to uh, take the scissor lift, get on the end here, and then just kind of shimmy that panel over. That'll fill up most of the rest of it. Then we're going to need to like slice maybe like a two foot section. And then I should just be able to get the scissor lift over here, lift that part up, uh, slop it on the end and screw it down. So we're really close to having the roof done. And then I'm going to have to figure out where, where all the trim goes. I've actually, uh, Mueller has a lot of videos online, actually on, on YouTube. Um, showing you how to put together the various kits they have. And so th what they sent me is kind of like a mishmash of their various kits. So I've kind of pieced together what I need to do. Uh, so a little more roof, and trim, gutters, flashing. I think I'm gonna have to get on top of the roof for that, which I'm not too thrilled about, but we'll see how it goes. Um, so almost done, almost.
Last screw. is done I think it came out pretty darn nice especially for uh, for not having any instructions uh, we've got uh, Bob the camper up here the car hauler and that's really all I ever intended on putting up here I actually have though if I either um, move this spare tire or just uh, put the car hauler like a little bit closer to the house I can uh, park the side-by-side -side up here so I might wind up doing that uh, the camper you can see is off to the side right now um, and that's because the air conditioning unit for the shop is going to go over in that corner. At least that's where I'm planning on putting it. So I left myself some room to work over there. Ideally, I think I would have made this like a little bit wider and been able to park the trailers right next to each other. But I think I mentioned this before, the, sep the septic system starts like right here. So we could have gone like a foot, maybe two feet further. Uh, but then we would have had to stop anyway. So this is the size we wound up with. Um, as you can see though, there's, um, there's a pickle beer waiting for me here. And that's because uh, after I was done with everything, I found um, there's extra parts in this box here. So these are, uh, they're like panel close off things. So if you're doing like a wall or something, you put these at the bottom of the wall and it would stop bugs and whatever from coming up under your wall. The thing is, they only gave me 12 of them and there was 12 roof panels. So I could have put them at one end of the lean to or the other. Uh, and it doesn't make sense to close off something that is open on both sides anyway. So I just, I intentionally didn't use those. But then this stuff I forgot about. So this is uh, sealant tape. And I think what this is supposed to do is in between uh, every roof panel, you're supposed to put uh, a strip of this tape down and that seals in between the roof panels. The thing is though, like water doesn't really travel up, I don't think. And so I'm counting on gravity to keep the water going down and not up underneath the roof panels. If it ever becomes a problem, I could just like unscrew all those panels, shove that stuff in there, screw it back down, I'm sure. Uh, so I'll keep it around for a little while. But um, again, there were no instructions. So do I really have to drink the pickle beer? I don't know. I think I'm just going to save it for another time because this, this is a tasty one. Believe you me. So that is the latest addition to the shop. The next one you'll probably see, uh, I think we can do the bathroom next because every time I'm out here working on the shop and I need to go to the bathroom, I'm like, why isn't it done yet? Uh, so the air conditioner is also in so I can go put that in place and that's one of the last things to do like get the wiring and the lines for that run before I can start closing up the walls. But again I think I'm going to do the bathroom first so stay tuned for an episode for that. Uh, don't forget like subscribe all that good stuff and uh, until next time just remember no instructions no problem. See you later. Whew, this is going to be quality foundation. Beep beep. Swing my boom around, drop my dirt. Yeah. Hey man, what uh, what you got there? Uh, no, it's here. I, I I don't think that's necessary. I'm clearly getting the job done. Uh, isn't that a little small? I don't know why you keep making that joke. I did all this with my excavator. It's impressive. It's not about the size. It's about the quality of the dig. And I'm stuck. I got this. Can you get me out? I got my, I got my bucket stuck. A little further in. Yeah, a little that way. Okay, now a little down. A little, little. I think this is the universal symbol for down. Alright, that might be too much down. That might be too, too much down. Too much down. Too much down. Okay, now up. Up, a little up. You're right, you're right, this does work a lot better. I'm scared now. Oh, we're going up! We're going... Yeah.
Is this payback for when I trapped you in your own sizzle lift? I don't like this game anymore. So you're gonna ride in the camper while we move it? Yeah, and um, and close the door like that one, and we will be right here, right there. Okay, so you don't fall out? Yeah. Okay, close the door. Yeah, we won't. We got for one. If we fall out, it'll hurt really, really bad. That's right. You're right. You don't want to hurt really bad. That's that's why you got close the door. Okay, close the door.